Hey, thanks so much for coming to our YouTube channel. You're about to hear a message from one of our Sunday experiences, but before you watch it, do me a favor and click the subscribe button so you can catch all the new videos coming out each and every week. Enjoy today's message. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 through 21. Very familiar passage of scripture today. Very familiar passage of scripture, very familiar story. But I just believe that God is going to do something with our time together. And I hope you all brought lunch because this is going to be the best three hours of your life. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 43 verses. Some of y'all think I'm playing. Isaiah chapter 43 verses 18 through 21 says this. Remember ye not the former things. Somebody say former things. Remember ye not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. I love this word right here. It says behold. Somebody say behold. Behold I will do a what? A new thing tomorrow, a new thing next month, a new thing in 2025, no, 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 it says a new thing, now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness, and I will even make rivers and cause rivers to come up out of the desert. The beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people. My what? Chosen. It says in the word, for many are called, but few are what? Chosen. And then verse 21, it says this, this people have I formed for myself, and they shall show forth my what? Praise. The title of my message is two words this morning, and the, those two words are divine reset. Somebody say divine reset, divine reset. Let's pray one more time. God, we thank you for your promise. We thank you for your word. God, today, let my word be your word. Let my moves be your moves. Let my thoughts be your thoughts. Let it not be about a man's song or dance today, but let it be all about you. And let every person under the sound of my voice leave here forever changed in every area of their life, whether that's physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally, financially, whatever the need is, I thank you that you are the way maker, miracle worker, and promise keeper. Have your way in our, with our time together today in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen, amen. and amen. High five somebody on your way down and say divine reset, divine, divine reset, divine reset. One more time, somebody say divine, divine. reset. Before I dive into the scripture this morning and really lay this foundation for you because I want to try to do my best uh, to paint a picture for you this morning and allow you to really take something home with you and take something into your week um, because I don't know about you, but I'm believing God for big things this week. Is anybody believing God for some big things? A lot of people, you know, uh, my family and I, we took a, a couple days, a few days off uh, vacation over this past week and went to the mountains in Tennessee with me and my wife and uh, uh, my four kids. Y'all have four biological children and, uh, and, and y'all need to pray for the preacher this morning because I, if I don't go crazy, uh, I might go broke and just all this kind of stuff. You know, how many uh, parents do I have in the room? You understand what I'm saying? But we were on vacation um, over the last several days, and I, I knew I was coming here and uh, super grateful for the opportunity and the honor to be here, and uh, as I was back in December, uh, but I, I was praying. I was like, God, I, I don't just want to pull a message out. I, um, I, I don't just want to um, take, you know, I, I've been preaching now uh, since I was, uh, I preached my first sermon at the age of 12 years old and uh, started preaching ever since then, and now I'll turn 30 in August, and, uh, and God's been real good to us, and I preached a lot of messages in a lot of places, but God, I, I said, God, I want you to give me a right now word for the people that will be in this room today, and the Lord began to deal with me about a, this subject, Divine Reset, that I really began to touch on at the end of 2023 with our church, the last Sunday before the end of the year. Um, I, I believe it was December 31st this past year. New Year's Eve was on a Sunday. And um, I, I started diving into this subject of Divine Reset, and the Lord really unctioned me in my spirit because how many of you know that this is the first Sunday of July? And what is this month? July is what? The seventh month. So we have now began the second half of 2024. And how many of you understand we just have six months left in 2024? 
for as we step into 2025. And the Lord brought this word back into my spirit. And he said, Randy, the same thing that I told you coming into 2024, he said, I'm going to reset some things again in order to take you to a new level in the, fi in the final months of 2024. For. And the definition of reset means this, is to take something back to its original state, recognizing its most basic functions and getting rid, I like this part right here, getting rid of what? The clutter. If the last four years of our life on this earth, with all of the craziness that we have seen from the pandemic to economics to politics to everything that we see going on around us, if the last four years have taught us anything, it has taught us there were things in life and there were also things in the church that we relied upon and then had to learn to function without. The past four years of our lives have exposed some things about us. It has revealed some things about us. And resetting is about pivoting our lives. But not just pivoting our lives, pivoting our lives, pivoting our structures, and also pivoting our systems to do what God had originally called the believers to do, which is simply this, to be a light in the dark place. That's what God has called us to do. He has called us to be a light in the dark places. But you know, a lot of things in our life, a lot of things in our lives we can reset just by doing something different ourselves. Do you understand that? You understand that the same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead is the same power that is living on the inside of every believer in this room today. So if you call yourself and if you know that you are a believer, there is power. There is a Holy Spirit on the inside of you. There is wonder-working power that is flowing on the inside of you where you can lay hands on the sick, what? And see them recover. You can speak things and things have to happen. It says in the Bible in Mark chapter 11, verses 22, 23, 24, it says speak to the mountain and it has to be removed and cast into the sea so God has enabled his believers with power and a lot of things in our life can change just simply by us changing things if you want to lose weight what do you do you eat differently right you diet right you go to the gym I live in Atlanta. We got a bunch of billboards everywhere. And uh, uh, I know people, you know, they don't have a lot of hair. And, man, they got, I think, 1-800-77-HAIR. You can get hair. You, I mean, what, whatever you want, man, they can give it. You can get new teeth. You can get new hair. You can get new everything. Whatever you want. If you don't like yourself, you can reset yourself. You can truly reset some things. There's some people in this room today. That there's some things going on in your marriage. And it's time for a reset in your marriage. There's some things, there's some people under the sound of my voice today that there are that there are some resetting of relationships, resetting of careers, resetting of maybe some finances. There, there are some things in your life that actually you've been praying for, but you actually have the power to change them yourself. Sometimes while we're praying, God says, you could have done that a long time ago. But it, it amazes me how as kingdom citizens, sometimes we expect God to do things and us never have to change. We expect God to make a way when us ne without, without us having to shift something that we're doing or, or change something that we're doing. And, and there are some things in our lives that we have the power to reset ourselves. The other night at the house, uh, we had uh, something happen, and, and there were a breaker tripped. And so I, I went out, and you know, I didn't have to call the power company. I didn't have to call an electrician. I went out myself and went to the breaker box, opened it up. Hey, a breaker tripped, and I flipped the switch. Some of y'all going to get this in a minute. I, I flipped the switch, and the lights came back on. There are some things we can do ourselves, but, somebody say but. There are some times where the only way a true reset can happen in certain situations, when you have exhausted your resources, 
when your back is up against the wall and it has felt like you prayed until you cannot pray anymore. You've cried until you cannot cry anymore. You have sought the face of God until you feel like you cannot seek his face anymore. You've given, you've served. And then there is a moment that God himself is the only person that can move in what I call a divine way. Meaning that only God can handle what you are in. And only God can handle what you are going through. Look at, back at the scripture, meaning God will make a way for you. In Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 through 21, God gives us an illustration of, divine, or of a divine reset. In this scripture and in this story, he tells the Israelites that he will do something absolutely brand new. He says, I promise you that I'm going to do something brand new. Something that you have never seen before. And I'm going to do this by making a way through the sea and a path through the mighty waters. And in this scripture, God is promising the people of Israel who had been in bondage that a new life will come out of the most difficult time in their nation's history. And he tells them, that he is going to do something extremely new, but also extremely different. You see, a lot of us ask for new, but we don't like different. A lot of us ask for new, but we don't like change. Be careful when you ask God for something. Because, because you just might get what you ask for. And when God begins to pour out things to you, but it doesn't look like what you thought it was going to look like. And then we end up getting mad at what we think is a curse when it is actually a blessing. Don't ask God to shut doors if you're not ready to lose relationships. Y'all gonna make me preach in this place today. Don't ask God to make a way if you don't want him to shift your friend circle around. Don't ask God to take you to a new level when everybody is not qualified to go with you into the next atmosphere. Don't ask, be careful. Be very careful when you ask God to do something because he just might give you what it is that you're asking for. I thank God every single day of my flipping life that he didn't give me what I was asking for when I wanted it. I thank God every day that he didn't allow me to walk into some rooms that I really wasn't ready to walk into yet. I thank God every day. I was talking to my wife, Carrie, the other day, and I said, I thank God he didn't give us where we are right now five years ago. Because if it wasn't for walking through what we have walked through five years ago in a certain situation, I wouldn't know how to handle where I am right now. And he says this, he said, I will make a roadway in the wilderness. And I will make, cause rivers to spring up in the desert, which suggests that there will be pathways that were never taken before. Through the reset that the Israelites were experiencing right here, through this reset, God was going to give and show them opportunities using the remnant of people that were left, using the residue of people that were left, from what they have been through. And so when you realize where this scripture is and you realize what's going on right here, you have a group of people that have lost a lot of things. You have a group of people that have lost a lot of friends, that have lost a lot of family, and that not have just went away, but actually there was an entire generation of Israelites that died off, that never saw the promised land, and that never saw the increase that God was taking them to simply because they had been freed from Egypt. But Egypt was still in their mind. All right. All right. All right. It's very possible to already have your miracle and still be bound. 
It's very possible to get the house that you want, but then move into it and still be depressed. Don't look at me so holy this morning. It's very possible. A car will not change it. A house will not change it. Getting married won't change it. That's for some single people in the room today. Getting married won't change it. And if you're already married, just look straight ahead. Don't look to your left. Don't look to your right. But we try to fill the void. And we try especially materially nothing wrong with those things nothing wrong with houses nothing wrong with cars god wants you to be blessed i believe all that but the moment we try to fill a void that only god can fill is the moment where we delay our own destiny and we blame it on the enemy but it's really our fault and through the reset i want to Say this again, God was going to give and show them opportunities using the remnant and residue left over from what they had been through. And let me tell you this, God absolutely never wastes anything. Time is never wasted with God. Energy is never wasted with God. Seasons of preparation are not wasted seasons. God never wastes anything. So in other words, if you still have it, he will still use it. And if you lost it, you didn't need it. Somebody needs to understand that today. God will never allow you to lose anything that you need. I'm going to say that one more time. God will never allow you to lose anything that you need. So if they walked, let them walk. If they talked, let them keep talking. Why? Because what God has for me in this season of my life is for me and it is for my family and it is for every area concerning my life. It is for me physically. It is for me spiritually. It is for me mentally, emotionally, financially. Every area of my life, if it concerns me, it concerns God. And so in Isaiah chapter 43 verse 18, it states, do not call to mind the former thing. Or consider the things of the past. And here God tells the Israelites that resetting is an opportunity for them to look for him to do brand new things and not get stuck inside of an old or in the old paradigms and ways of doing things. When we think about that scripture right there, I want to read it again. It says, do not call to mind the former things. Or consider things of the past. I said this to a, an, an individual I was talking to the other day. And I said, I heard my pastor, Bishop Boland, told me this a couple of years ago. He said, Randy, he said, methods are many and principles are few. Woo. Methods always change, but principles never do. And I believe in honoring the foundation that we have in the kingdom of God. Every day of my life, I do my best to honor the mothers and the fathers of the kingdom of God that have paved the way to do what it is that I am doing this morning. All right. All right. I understand that I would not be on this platform this morning if it wasn't for God calling a man and a woman, Bishop Jeff and Pastor Lisa Poole, to do something that they had never done before. I understand that. Yeah. Sitting at the Waffle House, their, their sons understand that. We, I've had conversations about that. We understand that people have gone before us to do, to, to do things and to set foundations and that we are to build upon a foundation. But... Do not call to mind the former things or consider the things of the past. We can be so stuck in the past that we fail to understand and to realize that God is wanting to do something new in areas of our life. How do you know that, Pastor Randy? Because here God tells the Israelites that resetting is an opportunity for them to do something different. He commands them not to get stuck in the former things that tied them to bondage. That tied them to deficiency. 
that tied them to poverty, that tied them to a defeated mindset and mentality. God tells them that as bad as it has been for them in this season of their life, it will also be hard for them to imagine anything else. Because let me tell you something. It, pain and trauma have a way of stopping you from moving forward. Am I in the right room today? Pain and trauma have a way of stopping you from moving forward. I guarantee you there are some people in this room that if you hear a song, it will make your mind go back to a moment where everything changed in your life. Some of you could smell a certain fragrance and you could go back to a scene in your life or something, something destructive happened to you in your life. And it's like reliving a movie in your life and a scene in your life over and over and over and over again. And for them, the Israelites, to be in a position to receive the light, they must forget. Not remember or meditate on the former things that God had delivered them from. Because I truly believe that there are times and seasons in our life that God will give us the gift to forget. Do you understand that? God will give us the gift to forget. In other words, forgive, forget, and then keep moving forward. There's some people in this room today and some people watching online this morning that you are still stuck in the same place simply because you have refusing to forgive somebody. What if I told you this morning that your miracle hinges upon the forgiveness that you release today? Your breakthrough hinges on the forgiveness that you release today. Because when you forgive, something supernaturally happens. It's like being forgiven of a debt. I don't know if anybody in this room has ever been forgiven of a debt before. And I'm not talking about spiritually either. I'm talking about real life debt. <laughs> Where all of a sudden something happened and maybe it was a letter in the mail. Maybe it was an email. Maybe it was a meeting at the bank. Maybe it was something. Somebody, maybe you owed somebody some money and they said, hey, you know what? I see God's hand is on your life. I see he's doing something. But now I'm going to forgive. I love these words. Forgive the debt. And in the matter of a moment, what was once old has now erased think about this we're going to shout in a minute but I really want you to understand what I'm trying to say here when you forgive it breaks the ties to the other individual or the other situation that has been wrapped around you because unforgiveness and bitterness there are people in prison and jail this morning simply because of unforgiveness and bitterness. There are people dead this morning because of unforgiveness and bitterness. There are some people that choose not to come to this house because of unforgiveness and bitterness. But as soon as you forget, as soon as you forgive, it's like God takes a spiritual pair of scissors and he cuts the ties off of everything that has been holding you back. I want you to imagine the enemy in the background. And there are strings attached to every part of you. And yeah, you can go out. And yeah, you can do some things. And yeah, you can say some things. But there is always a limit. There is always a ceiling. But the moment you say, God, I forgive them. He takes the scissors and he cuts the strings of the enemy. And it's almost like it never even happened and then immediately forgiveness wells up in your life and in your spirit and when you have forgiven somebody then all of a sudden it's almost like it never even happened even when people remind you of a situation you have to think did that really happen to me I sit 
in my living room in this season of my life, and my wife and I, or maybe a pastor friend of mine would be talking on the phone, and I go over a situation that happened several years ago, maybe 10 years ago in my life, and after I get off the phone or after I get done talking, I sit there and I think, did that really happen to me? Anybody ever said this? It feels like another lifetime. Why? When you walk in forgiveness, when you walk in forgiveness, it gives you the ability to forget. And then it gives you the ability to move on. Because in Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19, it says, God says, behold, I am going to do a what? New thing. And I truly believe that in this season of divine reset, I truly believe that God is doing something that we have never seen before. He's doing something that we have never seen in our life. And as I said at the beginning of this message this morning, the last four years of our life, it, it has caused us to rethink structures, rethink systems, and rethink our personal walk and lives and double down on what is really essential to our faith. Because the new thing that God is wanting to do is something that we have never seen before. And in the context of this text this morning, God is saying to the Israelites that he is going to deliver them into, watch this, unbelievable prosperity and advancement. That's what God is promising to the people, to his people. He said, I will to deliver unto you unbelievable prosperity and advancement somebody say prosperity, prosperity. and say advancement and, advancement. and so God says in, in that scripture the spirit of the Lord speaks and it says now it will spring up will you not be aware of it and this suggests right here this is where I want to stay just for the next few moments this suggests right here that the new thing will not be a progressive thing that happens. That the new thing will not be a gradual change of things that happen. The new thing, based on this scripture, this suggests that the new thing will happen suddenly. Somebody say suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. Why? Because in Acts chapter 2 it says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind and it sat upon all those that were in the house. And I don't know if you have ever experienced a suddenly moment but I have experienced a suddenly moment once or twice or three times in my life. There have been moments of my life where I was praying and I was crying unto the Lord and then suddenly he made a way when there seemed to be no way. Suddenly he made a way in the bank account suddenly he made a way in the family suddenly he made a way in every aspect of my life he made a way when there seemed to be no way but if we are not careful if we continue to ponder or dwell on those things that are in the past we can dismiss what God is doing in the present and how he is preparing us for the future. In other words, your pain and past can blind you to the possibility of your future. Let me say that again. Your pain and your past can blind you to the possibility of your future. Because I truly believe that in this season, God is saying to his people, he is doing something inside of the struggle. He is shifting things inside of your perplexity. He is doing things inside of the movement that you are feeling in this moment and in this time. He is working inside of all of the mess that we see happening in the world around us. Because let me tell you something. If you watch the news long enough, if you scroll on social media long enough, your mind will be filled with fear and anxiety and stress. And it will make you think that tomorrow will never come and there is no possibility of a future. 
But let me tell you something. When we serve the God of a suddenly moment, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place today. When we serve the God of a suddenly moment, I don't care what the economy looks like. I don't care what the government looks like. I don't care what your status is. I don't care what your last name is. I don't care how much money you may or may not have. When God begins to put his hand on your life, listen to me, listen to me. When God begins to put his hand on your life, And there is a true suddenly moment. It doesn't matter. When Lazarus was in the grave. Let me paint this picture. When Lazarus was in the grave. He was dead. Somebody say dead, dead. He was dead. Dead, dead. It was after the death watch. Mary and Martha cried to Jesus and said, If you would just have been here. We know you could have healed him. We've seen you heal him before. We've seen you heal other people. And how are you not going to heal your own family? And it even shows in the word that Jesus got emotional. Even the son of God had emotions. He was 100% God, but he was also 100% man. Everything that you have ever, ever felt in your life, he has felt it 10 times worse. And he said, take me to where his body lay. And they escorted Jesus to where Lazarus was. He said, roll the stone away. And I love this part right here. Because Jesus could have done a lot of things. He could have went in, we've seen him do this in the Bible, went in and lay on the body of Lazarus and say, come to life. Jesus could have went in and put his hand on his head and said, I command life to come back into your body. Rise from the dead. But Jesus, from a distance, you see his word I'm about to run all the way back to Atlanta today. You see, his word has no concept of time and space. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why? Because a lot of us, we live in chronological or chronos time. And we know when it's 1 o'clock. And we know when it's 2 o'clock. And we know when it's Christmas Day. And we know when it's Thanksgiving Day. And we know when it's time to go outside for our birthday. And we, we understand all of those things. And we know what chronological, what the Greeks call chronos time is. But there is another aspect of time that the Greeks understood that God works in. And that is called a Kairos moment and and, and when Jesus was standing there there was no concept of time and space he didn't care that it was past the death watch he didn't care that the religious people were watching he did not care that this was his own family member in this grave he said I am the way the truth and the life. He said, I am the resurrection. And then he's from a distance. He said, Lazarus, come forth. It doesn't say that he interceded for an hour. It doesn't say that he poured oil all over the tomb. All he did was speak. Speak a word. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place today. All he did was he. I'm going to preach it till y'all get it today. All he did was speak a word. And then, and then it said, suddenly the breath came back into Lazarus's body. And, and watch this. He got up from the grave and he was still wrapped inside of his grave clothes. And so I want you to imagine this for a moment. I want you to imagine Lazarus getting out of the grave. No one entered the grave. But Lazarus was still bound. And he got up off of that grave bed. And he's bound hand and foot. That's what the Bible says. And his face is wrapped with a napkin. He can't see where he's going. But he heard the word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he got up out of the grave. Lazarus can't walk. 
And so I just believe that that joker just started to hop. He said, I might be bound. I might be wrapped up. I might be tied up. I might can't be able to see. But when I hear his word, when I hear his word, when I hear the master calling my name, what once was dead has to come back to life. And the death that was holding it, the grave couldn't hold him. The cloth couldn't hold him. The bondage couldn't hold him. Whatever I gotta do, whatever I gotta do, if I'm wrapped up, I'm gonna come out of this thing, man. Even if I'm tied up, I'm gonna come out of this thing. Yes, they wrote you off. Yes, they left you. Yes, they talked about you. Yes, they stole from you. I'm wrapped up. Sit down. Sit down. Somebody say that was a test. That was a test. That was a test. I'm wrapped up, but bondage cannot stop the word. So, inside of the bondage, inside of the grave, God was working in all of that. He turned Kronos into Kairos. Because do you understand that you serve a God that can stop time? There's a passage in the Bible where God made the sun stand still. So don't you tell me that God can't get you exactly where you need to be. At the right moment. I feel like preaching in this house today because you got to understand he is working inside all of that. And we will miss what God is doing if we are not careful. If we look at what's happening around us, we will miss what God is doing and how he is moving if we are not careful. There's an old song that says, I think I mentioned this last time I was here. But there's an old song that says, pass me not, O gentle Savior, but hear my humble cry. One thing that I asked God in this season of my life, I said, God, whatever you're doing, I want to be a part of whatever you're doing. No matter where I'm at, no matter what I'm doing, I want to do whatever you have called me to do. Because God says in the scripture, he will make roadways in the wilderness. And he will make rivers in the desert. So in other words, he turns impossible into possible. Watch this. Not in 24 hours. Not in 30 days. He is not conformed or bound by chronos or chronological time. Because we say, God, here's 90 minutes of my week. Move here. You are allowed to move right here. And everything is to be done decently and in order. We understand that. But there are moments where God wants to break your box. Because as I'm getting ready to close, in Isaiah chapter 43 verse 20, we got to understand it describes how everything around the Israelites shows God at work time and time and time and time and time again. It even says in time of famine that the Israelites were provided for. It even says that in the time of weariness, it says that they are comforted. It says that he's making a way in the wilderness. It says that he's causing rivers to spring up in the desert. It says that he is doing all of these things. But I believe that it was all due to the part and the fact. This happened at this specific moment and specific time. Because their minds were now ready. Their mentality, I'm about to use that board, their mentality began to change. Close right here. 
I want to show you something. Read this scripture to you one more time. Remember ye not the former things, neither the consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a what? New thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And the beasts of the field shall honor me and the dragons and the owls. Because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. And this people have I formed for myself. And they shall show forth my praise. Right there, we good. Thank y'all. Y'all ready to go to school for a minute? Don't judge me by my handwriting, all right? What word is that? Say it again. Mentality. A man showed me this probably 10 years ago. And he said, Randy, what do you think this means? And when we think of the word mentality, we just begin to think our minds, the way we think. Which that is true. But inside of the word mentality, inside of the word mentality, <laughs> see, I like that bold faith. We can't see that over here. Watch this. Mentality. There are four words locked inside of the one word. You got me. Somebody say it's all about me. Me is singular. Me is singular. It's talking about yourself. Personally. Your passion. Your habits. Somebody say me. But then you got me. And then you got men. You see, men is not singular. Men is talking about multiple individuals a group of people men plural who are you around what is feeding into your life if you want a good marriage why are you hanging around people that don't have good marriages If you love your church, why do you hang around people that don't? If you don't want to be broke, and I want you to take this the right way, this is not shunning people off, but I believe that there are seasons of life where we must seclude ourselves away from people that don't have the same goals and ambitions as we do. Because as long as they can keep you down here. Because let me tell you something. Everybody ain't going to like when God starts blessing you. That's why you got to be careful about who you let that lay hands on you. That's why you got to be careful about who you let pray for you. Because not everybody wants you to win. Because you got to, oh, no, get, get me started right there. Not everybody wants you there. You got men but then you got this word right here and you got mental mental somebody say mental mental is your frame of mind and I'm wrapping this up right here mental is your frame of mind mental is your mindset what do you think about every day what is on your mind every day yes you're at work but what are you thinking about are you thinking about the next job that you want to have are you thinking about the business that you want to own or what you can do to expand your business are you thinking about the family that's not saved are you thinking about how God I just feel so spiritually dry in this season what am I going to do how am I going to work I need to be stirred again what are you thinking about? And so we have me. Somebody say me. me. We have men. Somebody say men. men. And then we have mental. Somebody say mental. mental. 
But then there's one more word that I didn't even know existed. And this young man that showed me this, he's a multiplied millionaire. And at the time, he was just 30 years old. He's about 40 now. And he showed me this, and he showed me this final word. And this final word is what changed my life. And it changed the way I thought. Because there is this final word that is called tality. Tality. And that word tality right there is, it means the great reality of your life. Free in its movement. Now this morning, I'm not talking about good vibes. This morning, I'm not talking about good energy. This morning, I'm not talking about sage. This morning, I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. And I want you to understand something. The great reality of your life, it is attainable. And you can make it there. But there is a reason why in the word mentality. That the great reality of your life doesn't come first. The great reality of your life, which in parentheses beside that, is the God-ordained destiny of your life. The great reality of your life cannot and will not be fulfilled if you don't get yourself right. If you don't get the people around you right. And if you don't get your mind right. Because I found out a little something. Can I tell you what I found out? I found out a little something. I found out that as much as I wanted to help people. As much as I wanted to do what God had called me to do. As much as I wanted to be what God had called me to be. As much as I wanted to be the greatest husband. As much as I wanted to be the greatest father, and as much as I wanted to be the greatest pastor, the greatest son, the greatest uncle, the greatest cousin, if I'm not right, I can't. That's why a lot of us break down and give up and stress out and are anxious and depressed and all of this stuff is because we're trying to take care of people and we ain't right in the head and, and we don't have it all together and, and, and we don't have our spirits right and we're not praying like we should pray and we're not giving like we should give and we're not serving like we should serve and, and then as soon as I got me right and then I started walking around my circle and every person that was not for me I said you got to get out of here because where I'm going I, I, I don't need you where I'm going I, I, I love you I, I, we're going to heaven together but on this earth you can't you can't be around me because you're not in sync with where I'm going and only those that are qualified to go where I'm going can go with me and so I got me right and then and then I got my crowd right and, and then I got my friends right and, and then God began to work on my mind and, and let me tell you something there is nothing more powerful than a made up mind because when your mind is made up people can tell you whatever they want to tell you people can do whatever they want to do but as for me and my house yes God as for me and my house as for me and my house come what may whatever storm wants to blow come what may but my mind my mind my mind is here and it's telling me to follow God Everybody's standing on your feet all across this place. So I got me right. I got my people right. And now I got my mind right. And God, I've worked on me. You stripped off the pain. You stripped off the sickness. You stripped off the disease. You stripped away everything. Just like Job. Naked came out of my mother's womb. And God just killed me now if you're going to take one more thing from me. I'm in a room full of people today that it seems like life and sometimes you blind.
blame God for taking things from you. Or you're at a point and you're saying, God, if you take another thing from me, I don't think I can take it anymore. Some of you have prayed to God to end your life. You said, God, if this is all I can see and if this is all I can do, please take me out of here. If this is all my family is ever going to do, please just take me out of here. I'm trying to do the best that I can. But God has you. Right? said my son my daughter you worked on yourself and you thought what you were going through was just for you but do you understand that you never go through something just for you because one day when you're dealing with the people around you there's going to be someone who you, is going to be where you used to be. There's going to be a failing marriage somewhere. There's going to be somebody hooked on something that you used to be hooked to. There's going to be somebody having family problems. There's going to be somebody about to give up on their dream when they have no idea their dream is going to set free thousands of people in the future. But it takes a man takes a woman who says God I'm willing to work on myself and then I'm willing to work on the people that are around me and God take everything out of me that don't need to be there take out relationships that don't need to be there close every door that needs to be closed shut every door that needs to be shut God even if it's what I want if you don't want it for me I don't want it in my mind I truly believe that if you can get your mind out you can get your money out if you can get your mind out a lot of times you can get your health out your mind is a powerful thing God has given us a mind to think and to use why the mind a lot of times cannot be fully explained because now our mind is right and when we get those three things in order we get the me we get the people that are around us we get our minds and that introduces us and that allows us to walk into the great reality that God has us for and put on the earth for a purpose so if you shift your mentality Reset yourself. Reset who you hang around. Reset how you think. And then the great reality and God-given destiny that is on your life will come into full manifestation. And that's what I speak over the people in this room and watching online this morning is that the remaining months left in 2024 that God will allow you to walk into a season of full manifestation. Because in Isaiah chapter 43, verse 21, I'm done. God says, the people who I've formed for myself will declare my praise. A divine reset comes when we thank God for what he's doing now. Because God doesn't bless people that are not thankful and are ungrateful. Because we thank him for what he's doing now. We thank him even for our past failures. Why? Because we've learned from our past failures. And we thank him for our past challenges. Why? Because he's brought us through our past challenges. We thank him for our past defeats because he is he has caused us to overcome our past defeats. And we thank him for our past attitudes because he has given us a new attitude in our new place. We thank him for all those things. Because I believe God, again, never wastes anything. And I believe that if it's not God sent, it will be God used. He will always use it. 
and we can thank him for all of this because God desires he desires us to rise from the worst part of our lives what some people would call to rise up from the ashes of our lives just like they say a phoenix rises out of the ashes so shall you rise out of the ashes of your life and blossom as a great creation that God has called you to be in that people have never seen before and in these moments we are eligible notice that word right there eligible just because you're eligible you have to pursue what you are eligible for you're eligible for the scholarship you're eligible for the job you're eligible for the business you're eligible to have a spouse and a family you're eligible to do a lot of things but it always takes a step out of the eligible and into the manifestation and there's some people here today that you are on the edge of a miracle and a breakthrough you're looking at a situation and you feel like it is impossible and today starting out the month of July I believe the Lord is saying reset yourself reset your mind reset the people that are around you because as you reset I will make a way in the wilderness and I will cause rivers to spring up in the desert. And those people that he made a way for, those people that he saved, those people, they saw their promised land. And I came to tell, tell you this morning here at Hope Church, you will see your promised land. But don't die in the wilderness can't give up where you are because there's more for you there's so much more to the story because he's not done all right, all right. with you yet because we serve a God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh within us every head bowed every eye closed all across this place It's not over until he says it's over. And God has the final say over every area of your life. Because there's so much more to the story.
if you're in this place today, you say, Pastor Randy, I'm ready for a divine reset in my life. And I'm ready to step into the next place that God has for me with nobody looking around. Would you raise your hand and say, that's me today. That's me today. I'm not going to embarrass you, but just raise your hand. All around this place. Second question is this, nobody looking around. If you're in this place and you say, Pastor Randy, I want a divine reset for the second half of this year and I need to make Jesus Christ Lord of my life. That's the most important decision you can make today. And if you're in this place and you say, Pastor Randy, I need to make some things right and you want to say yes to Jesus today, would you lift up your hand and say the second half of 2024 is not going to be the same as the first half and I want to say yes to Jesus today. Lift up that hand right now. Lift up that hand. There's hands going up all across this place. If you're saying yes to Jesus right now, I want you to get out of your seat and come to this altar. Can we put our hands together for the people that are coming? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We got something for you. I want you to come on. Come on, come on, come on. Right up in this altar right here. There's so much more to the soul. You're not done with me yet. You're not done with me yet. Y'all can turn around. You're not done with me there's so much more to the story. You're not done. You're not done. Y'all just stay right here. The first question that I asked was about divine reset. I want you to place your hand on the shoulder of the person next to you. Pastor Jacob, I'm so sorry for this time. I'm trying to get a sound. First prayer I'm going to pray is the prayer of salvation. And right after this prayer, I'm going to say what I believe is a prophetic prayer for every person that is connected to somebody. Because it says in the word of God that as Job prayed for his friends in the midst of his difficulty, that God released double on his life. And I believe as you pray for the person that is connected to you, God will release double for you when you stop being concerned about what you need and you start interceding for somebody else. Because as you pray for somebody else's reset, God says, I'm going to reset your entire life in the matter of a moment just like that. And that's going to be the second prayer that we pray. But the first prayer we're all going to say out loud together as a church family and those that are right here in the altar, I want you to say this with me. Say, dear Jesus, I come to you as a sinner in need of a savior. I believe that you came, lived, died for my sins, and rose from the dead. I also believe that you are now seated at the right hand of the Father and coming again for me one day. Today, I turn my back on everything that's not like you. And I look toward and I move forward towards everything that is like you in this season of my life. I'm no longer bound. I'm no longer a slave to fear. But I am a child of God. I'm saved. And I am on my way to heaven. And my name, it is written in the Lamb's book of life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can we put our hands together for the individuals that just said that? If you enjoyed this message, why don't you go ahead and share it with someone, a friend or a family member, and follow us on social media at Hope Church WR. And we'd love to see you on a Sunday morning right here at Hope Church. Thanks for watching.